I know. <laughs> what? What? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Good dog. Yeah, she's smiling. She's smiling. Yes, she is. Look at that gorgeous white smile. Yeah, happy dog. Happy Lucy. Oh, open mouth smile. Oh, good dog. Hi. How are you doing? How was your day? Huh? Ooh. What you doing? Did you smile? Yeah. Oh. Who has done that there? Was it you? Who's done that? Now I've got to clean that up. Was it you? Or was it Archie? What am I going to do? Alfie? Was that you? Was it you? Zoe, did you eat all the cookies out of the jar? And then did you poop all over the house? And then did you come over here and lay down instead of telling anybody about it? There it is, look, see? There we go. <laughs> That's kind of frightening, actually. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's cute. It ought to go on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll put it up there. It ought to go on YouTube, yes. Yes, it should. It got a pretty smile, I think. And it's simply a form of aggression and social structure which decides who gets access to the resources first, who gets access to the resources second, who gets access to the resources last. And so it's very much related to the limited resources and some mechanism to settle into a non-destructive, non-fighting way to uh, sort out that limited resource. It applies to domesticated dogs because virtually all species of animals have to have some way to manage the limited resources. So the first thing to remember is that dominance is only going to happen when there are limited resources. So in domestic dogs and our pets, there are very rarely any limited resources. They have plenty of food, they have plenty of attention, they have plenty of, of the resources that they need. So there's no need for any dominance. So we don't see dominance. There are a few breeds of dogs which still have very strong sense of social structure, limited resources, dominance, and so on. And in very rare occasions, some members of those breeds may actually get into a dominant situation over limited, what they perceive as limited resources with uh, humans. Um, and in fact, most likely it's gonna be with members of their social pack. Um, and so it's where I tend to see it in my clinical cases is most likely with owners. But this behavior is very rare, very, very, very unusual. So I can't say it doesn't happen um, that, that dogs try to dominate a, a, a human, an owner, particularly an owner, but it certainly is a very rare kind of behavior. There is one group of breeds that have been described by the geneticists as what's called the ancient breeds. And um, those members, the breeds that are part of that group, basically are indistinguishable from wolves in their genetics. And so they tend to be very wolf-like. They tend to be more aggressive. They tend to be better, very, very powerful hunters. 
they tend to have a much stronger dominance hierarchy and therefore dominance issues. So when we see dominance issues, which are very rare as behavior issues in dogs, but when we do see dominance issues, either between uh, two dogs or between a dog and an owner, it tends to be in one of those ancient breeds. Understanding uh, need um, to exert dominance and social structure over limited resources is only found in a, in a few breeds of dogs. Many breeds of dogs, that behavior has been bred out of them completely. Dominance tends to be, social structure tends to be not very important to any of the terriers, which is where the pit bulls and, and a lot of the bully breeds are. Uh, another group, another uh, g very clearly defined genetic group are the mastiffs, um, where some of those breeds are located. And again, uh, it's, it's very rare or virtually unknown to have dominance behavior issues with those, those groups. It's pretty much reserved to the, these ancient breeds and a couple of other breeds. Hovering over him, interfering, alpha rolling, uh, rolling them over on their back and so on is never a good idea. They're not expressing dominance towards the human, they're expressing dominance towards another dog most often. Any kind of an act, action taken by the human is gonna be completely misinterpreted by the dog. It's gonna be interpreted as an attack. Hey, I'm over here uh, dealing with this other dog and some limited resource of some kind, and all of a sudden you attack me. And so that's never a good thing for the relationship between humans and dogs. the hovering over, the alpha rolling, are not dominant signals. They're not part of dominance aggression. Wolves don't do them. Wild dogs do not do them. So again, it's the wrong individual expressing dominance, trying to control the situation, and then that wrong individual is doing it the wrong way. Uh, and so it's even more likely to be simply interpreted as an attack by a human and that results in all sorts of other issues and problems and relationship issues and, and so on. So it's, it's most definitely not a, not a good idea. Probably 80% of the cases of aggression that I see in dogs has to do with anxiety. Anxiety is the major aggression problem uh, in dogs and, and the one that we have to work on the most to, to fix. We need to research it. We need to find solutions to it. People need to recognize it better. Anxiety is, is the driver, the cause of almost all aggression in dogs. I wish every dog owner had a better understanding of anxiety was able to see and understand anxiety in their dog. Uh, the biggest issue we see is anxiety, and, and, it's, and, and what they need to do is they need to understand when their dog is anxious and to deal with that appropriately. Nothing. Wait. Okay. Where is it? 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 Where is it?